the valley of hems is the last the ultimate the valley of hems for it is also known as the valley of celebration rebirth resurrection because things like rebirth and resurrection happens in the seventh valley that christ is reborn reborn in the body of glory reborn in the body of light reborn in body divine now there is no positive no negative there is no duality one is one unity has arisen and hindus call this as atvai the duality has disappeared one has come to look at the eternal in all that is ephemeral your body is ephemeral it comes and goes but that which is within the body is eternal to seek beauty fragrance and love in hate to seek happiness in sorrow to see all that can be manifested in the unmanifest this is considered to be knowledge and this is duality because it keeps man deprived of his essential nature it keeps him distorted the moment you recognize the real nature of this duality only then all worries all sorrows all sufferings vanish this is the essence of the valley of hems al ghazali has given it a beautiful name the valley of hems now there is nothing left just a song a song of celebration praise of god utter joy this is what i call as ultimate orgasm if i were going to name this valley i would call it the valley of total orgasm only celebration is left one is flowered the seed has blossomed the fragrance is released now there is no where to go man has become that for which he was seeking searching and struggling man is a paradox he is not what he is he is that which he is not yet man is a paradox he is not what he is he is that which he is not yet but the day you realize the ultimate you will have a love arising in your heart because then you will know that you are always this because of your ignorance because of your conditioning and all that was considered as knowledge you had been missing all this was just unknown to you the future the ultimate flowering was contained in you but it was hidden you had to discover it these seven valleys are the valleys of discovery of your essential nature of your being this is a beautiful map this is sufi map now let me take the parable with i began the talks on the seven valleys of sufis with a parable of hazrat imam zafar sadiq rasulullah tallahu now the parable it can be explained now there was once a woman who abandoned the religion in which she had been brought up she left the ranks of the atheists too and joined another faith then she became convinced of the truth of yet another each time she changed her belief she imagined that she had gained something but not quite enough each time she entered a new fold she was welcomed and her recruitment was regarded as a good sign and a sign of her sanity and enlightenment her inward state however was one of confusion this woman was lost in the first valley the valley of knowledge she got hooked to the negative she became knowledgeable of this path and that she went to this school and to that she went to this teacher and that she studied various doctrines and each time she started something new she would be thrilled it would be a kind of a honeymoon 
and sooner or later she would be fed up with it and she would start all over again. Moving and searching again, that was her way. The total result was that she had gathered much knowledge of diverse nature, much knowledge of contradictory systems. All those systems work. Remember, never forget this. Each system works, but it works in its purity only. If you mix it with many systems, it will never work. It will be like you take a few parts from a Mercedes Benz and a few parts from a Rolls Royce and a few parts from a Chevrolet and another few from Ford and a few from truck and a few from somewhere else and you put them together. They are beautiful but this mechanism that you have created is not going to move. A part that was functioning in a certain mechanism will not be able to function with another kind of parts. Each system is an organic whole. It is complete in itself. If you listen to Mahavir and find a few beautiful thoughts and then you go to Buddha and listen and find a few beautiful thoughts and you make a concoction, you will become confused. Those fragments that you have taken from Mahavir are beautiful but they belong to a certain system and they were organic parts of a certain whole. They can function only in the whole, but they cannot function with anything Buddhist or Sufi or otherwise. And the Buddhist fragments are beautiful but only in Buddhist system. Now this woman became more and more confused and this woman is very representative of many people that we see all around. Many people here also who have been going to this teacher and that, to this system and that, and go on gathering. And they think that just by gathering a few wise statements, they are going to become wise. They are utter fools. They will simply go mad. Each system is perfect and works, but don't mix it with anything else. Let it function on its own. It is said of Ramakrishna Paramahans that he practiced eight different paths. He used one path, that is a root, and through that he reached the ultimate. He returned and started using another root. For instance, in your city, there may be an important building of significance or importance. That important building or monument can be reached through various routes. People living in different parts of the city can reach that monument following different routes. You can choose one route and reach there. You will enjoy the ambience of that route the beauty as well, then you can choose another route and still reach there. But if you want to mix the two routes, you will delay the process and you may get confused and may not reach either. This woman abandoned the religion in which she had been brought up. Then she became an atheist. She abandoned religion itself. Then she joined another faith and she abandoned atheism too. And then she became convinced of the truth of yet another. Each time she changed her belief, she imagined that she had gained something, but not quite enough. She was just collecting fragments, wise sayings. These wise sayings may look wise, may be useful to the system from which they have been taken, but they become useless the moment you take them out. It is said of a Hindu mystic that he went begging and a woman looked into his eyes. He had beautiful eyes. The saint have beautiful eyes. Nobody can have eyes like a saint. The depth, the joy, the feeling that one has arrived, the relaxation, the rest, the compassion, all that part of the eyes. 
the woman became very much attracted to the eyes. She started following the mystic. Then one day the mystic asked, what is the matter? Why do you go on following me? I do not see any religious search in you, the woman confessed. She said, in fact, I do not have anything to do with religion. I have simply become attracted to your eyes. You have beautiful eyes. The mystic said, you go home. Tomorrow I will come to your home. She was very happy. She thought that the mystic was also interested in her. She took a bath, perfumed her body, decorated everything with flowers and cleaned the whole house. With great expectation and hope she was waiting. With this came the mystic. She could not believe it. He had taken his eyes out and had brought them for her. And he said, you keep them. Otherwise, you will have to follow me unnecessarily. You keep these eyes. Yes, indeed, you can have them. I do not have much use for them because whatsoever I needed to see, I have seen. There is no need to see anything else. And that too, there is nothing worth seeing anymore. And it did not look good that you go on following me just because of these eyes. You keep them. This is stunned the woman. She could not believe her eyes. Are these eyes any more? They are not. They were eyes only when they were in the organic unity of the body. Now they are nothing. Now you can look into them and you will not find any depth. You can look into them and you will not find any compassion or any love. There is nothing. They are just ordinary pebbles. Meaningless. The meaning is always in totality. So never think that you can become wise by collecting wise sayings from here and there. That is not possible. In this age, many people have tried that. Take a few things from Quran and a few things from Bible and a few things from Bhagavad Gita and from Dhampath and collect them and make a concoction. That concoction he used to call the synthesis of all religions, this is just meaningless. You cannot create a synthesis of all religions. It will be like you cut off one of the hand and one leg of Krishnamurti and the head of Meher Baba and put them together and call it synthesis of religions. It will not be of any use. It will stink. It will be ugly. That is what someone has done. No synthesis is possible. No synthesis is needed. No synthesis is needed between a rose bush. No synthesis is needed between a rose bush and the lotus. They are perfectly beautiful as they are. Lotus is lotus. Rose is rose. Islam is Islam. Hinduism is Hinduism. Zen is Zen. Sufism is Sufism and Judaism is Judaism and Jainism is Jainism. They are perfectly beautiful as they are. They are not lacking any. Each system is complete in itself. Now this woman gathered something from everywhere and each time she went to a new school. Now this woman gathered something from everywhere and each time she went to a new school. Of course, whenever a new re recruit comes, the people feel very good. It proves that they are right. This woman had been to that master and to that path and she left, abandoned all. Now she had come to theirs, their master. So their master must be the highest one, the greatest one. So they all welcomed her and they recruited her and registered it and regarded it as a good thing and a sign of sanity and enlightenment. It is not sanity. In fact, she was going insane and it was not enlightenment. She was getting farther away every day. But to know that she had to come to a real master. She could really, who could really shock her. Her inward state, however, was one of confusion. At length, she heard of a certain celebrated Sheikh Imam Zafar Sadiq, 
Only a real master can be shocking. All others who are just pseudo are never shocking. How can they shock? You are their customers. They have to persuade you. They cannot shock you. They have to adjust themselves to you. In fact, they always say what you want to hear. They never say that which will be shocking. Otherwise, you will leave them. I know. I have been in contact with millions of people all over. And because I went on shocking them, by and by some of them left. They were not here to listen to the truth. They were here to listen to their truth. Truth about their part. And they had nothing. They had no truth at all. If they had truth, there would have been no need for them to come to listen to me in the first place. But they thought that they had the truth. If they go to a pseudo master, he will say the things that they want to hear. He will accommodate himself to them. And whenever a master accommodates himself to you, beware he is no master. Because if he is accommodating himself to you, how can he transform you? He is your follower. He is trying to console you. He cannot be a transforming medium. Transformation is painful. The master has to work with the hammer in his hand. This woman came to Hazrat Imam Zafar Sadiq. When she came to him, after he listened to her protestations and ideas, he said, return to your home. I shall send you my decision in a message. That is the way of Sufis. They are very, very experimental people and very practical and down to earth. Rather than saying anything, he says, I will send a message, you go home. He must have seen the reality of the woman that she was already too confused. Saying anything to her would be confusing, like confusing her even more. Right now, nothing could be taught to her. Right now, she did not need to learn anymore. She had already learned enough. She needed to unlearn. So he did not say anything. Soon afterwards, the woman found a disciple of the Sheikh at the door. In his hand was a packet from his master. She opened it and saw that it contained a glass bottle half full with three layers of packed sand, black, red and white, held down by a bed of cotton. On the outside was written, remove the cotton and shake the bottle to see what you are like. She took the wadding out and shook the bottle, colored grains of sand mixed together and all that she was left with was a mass of grayish sand. Imam Zafar Sadiq is trying to show her you have become just confusion. You have become mixed with all kinds of colors and the result is that you are just green. You do not have any color and these three layers of sands are very significant. Sufis say there are three ways to God. Knowledge, love, action. Just as Hindus say Dhyanmar, the way of meditation, the way of love or bhakti, the way of karma, the way of actions. This is because man has three faculties, the faculty of cognition, the faculty of feeling and the faculty of action. The body is the source of action. Heart is the source of feeling, love and devotion. And intellect is the source of cognition, knowledge and love. Because of these three faculties in man, there are three doors. Through these three doors man can enter into the divine. Action is black because it is the lowest. Feeling or love is white because it is the highest and between the two is the intellect red. Intellect is painted red because it is very aggressive and blood-like. It has the color of blood. The heart is painted white by Sufis because it is innocent. White is symbol of renunciation. You can ask the physicist. The physicists say that the color white means that all the rays of the sun have been turned back. 
The color black means that all the rays of the sun have been absorbed. The red means that only red is turned back. The green means that only green is turned back. Each ray of light has seven colors. If a certain thing absorbs all colors, it becomes black. If a certain thing renounces all colors, it becomes white. So black is indulgence, white is renunciation. Love is sacrifice, love is renunciation. When you love, you are ready to give all. By giving you become white, intellect is very aggressive always. Intellect is always aggressive, always in a fighting mood, argumentative. Hence the red color is chosen for that. Action is the lowest, the body oriented. But all these three doors are there. There were three layers of sands in the bottle. The bottle was half full and the master said, remove the vat, shake the bottle and see what happens. This is your situation. There is something from the people who talk about love and live in love and something from the people who talk about knowledge and live through intelligence and something about people who talk about actions and live through actions and they have all become mixed in you and now you do not have any color you are just grayish a confusion this must have been a great shock to the woman because everywhere else she had gone before she had been welcomed and everywhere they had told her that now she had become enlightened because she had chosen the right master. Now she had come to the right door. Now she had become sane. Up to now wandering here and there, she had been mad. She was recruited with great welcome. But Imam Zafar Sadiq hammered her. He did not even feel it right to say anything to her. He simply sent a message, a very practical device to show her the state of consciousness. She was lost in the first valley of knowledge. She could not go beyond the first valley. This story is of great significance. Many of you are lost in the first valley. If you want to go to the second, you will have to drop all the rubbish that you have gathered in your mind. All kinds of thoughts that you have to drop. You will have to unlearn, regain your innocence. Unlearning is a positive path. Through unlearning, you will have a new attitude arising in you. You will be less concerned with the known. You will be more concerned with the known. And once you have dropped all your knowledge, it will be very clear to you whether it is action that is going to be your door, or it is love, or it is knowledge. Right now you are a grace mass. Meditate over this story and meditate over the seven valleys. Let me repeat it again. Man is a paradox. Man is only being who tries to surpass himself. Man is the only being who has a great longing to transcend. This is man's glory because this is God's gift to man and this is man's anguish to him. Now, it depends on whether you will make it into a blessing or into a curse. Subhanallah.